This is a Kenmore dishwasher I picked up for free. That's right, for free on the internets. Somebody on Craigslist was tossing it out. Said it worked 50% of the time, and then when it didn't work, it threw an error code. Uh, I didn't really talk to him about it or anything, so that's all I know. The, uh, the question is, is it fixable? And uh, that's what we're going to find out. I'll throw the model number in the description or the title or something so you know what we're talking about here. And you can tell we're going to need it very quickly. It's only been an hour and a half. Come on, people. Now, straight off the hop here, it looks like there's wherever this was, there's a bunch of hard water. And uh, maybe, you know, there's a sensor in here that's getting triggered. That's buggered up because of that. Just a thought, we shall investigate. First thing we're gonna do is run some acetic acid through here, so try and clear out some of the mineralization. All right, I got it installed. The handle is kind of loose on this, so the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, take apart the door and see if I can't tighten that up right away. Okay, so inside the door we've just got a couple of bolts holding the handle on and there's no washer or anything. So uh, we'll take those bolts right out and they, they don't seem to tighten up very much. Almost like they're, ah, like maybe they're stripped a little bit, but yeah. So we'll try and fix that up a bit. All right, bottom of the handle, there's a tiny little set screw. There's a 5 16 hex wrench. So you're gonna wanna loosen that off and then the handle, the actual handle will come off. And then on the door, there's a uh, fluted or flanged dealio here. And it's got a slot in it so we can tighten it up at the top. Okay. Flat hunt on the bottom. Nut driver on the top. And we'll see if we can't. Well, should I tighten it up first, or should I put a washer on it? Well, maybe we should loosen it and put a washer on it. Oh, that thing doesn't want to come off. Not a bit, man. Okay, we'll probably go the other direction. Tightening, not a thing. What the hell? Oh, maybe I got a tiny turn out of it. Yeah, it seems to have tightened it up. Jeez. I'll give it one more go. Okay, that seems tight. We'll do the same to the other. Oh, you didn't see any of that, did you? <laughs> Sorry about that. You can see it's loose. And away we go. Oh, it doesn't take much to tighten it, but good God, it's it's really difficult to move. Oh, okay. So if your handle's loose, eh? That's where you want to start, right, right from the beginning. Just go right to this. I'm not even sure this is going to fix it, to tell you the truth. That's as good as it goes. And the other side. Nice. Okay, nice and tight. Oh, that fixed it. It's reasonably solid. Check your set screws first. That's my advice in this case. All right, well, we've got the uh, control panel open. We'll just have a quick peek at it. Now, I don't actually see it. This seems like a pretty new machine. There's nothing that seems blown out. And I'm thinking, you know, there may be an issue with the latch switch. Maybe the reason why it's throwing an error code and stopping is because it's coming unlatched during the cycle. Just a thought. But, you know, again, we won't be able to test that until we actually throw that error code. Anyway, it went back together with a very small 
swearing to work ratio. So we will uh, throw some vinegar in there and try and clear out some of that uh, try and clear out some of that mineralization because there be a wee bit in there. And then we'll just run it for a rinse. I'm not going to spare the vinegar in this case. You can already see it's going to work dissolving that stuff. Is red light bad? Oh, there we go. All right, it appears to be doing something, but it's not. No water is getting into the washer, which makes me think it's the solenoid. So that's gonna be my first line of attack here. Okay, apologies for the shitty lighting, but uh, here is the water inlet valve, and this goes to a uh, solenoid valve, which is there, and then the solenoid is just actually behind it, and there's a little connector that connects up to it. And uh, I think I can hear the solenoid clicking on and off. Could be my imagination, but uh, let's assume that the solenoid is working and that the valve is the problem. So I went and looked the part up on the internetto there, and uh, there's a mesh screen somewhere, I couldn't tell exactly where it was, but somewhere on this valve there's a mesh screen that very well could be chunked up and preventing the water from flowing. So I'm going to take that off and see what we can see. Sears, you dirty bastards. They've got security screws on these things. <laughs> now I'm going to have to go digging. <gasps> yeah. It's very possible I just spent the last half an hour looking for something that I don't actually own. I thought for sure I had those drivers, but for the life of me, I can't find them. Can't remember the last time I used them either. So I guess I'm going to be heading out to the horror freight to find something to fit the bill here. Damn it! Hate that! Well, there's the solenoid valve, and uh, the screen looks clean, so... I guess I've been foiled again. Uh, we'll test the solenoid now to see if it's actually firing and letting things pass through. Now I've hooked it up to the mains just with a power cord and here's the solenoid here. We're just going to turn it on and see if we can hear it click and hopefully test whether there's any, uh, you know, whether the thing retracts or not to let the water through. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to see that something happen at the bottom there behind the mesh screen. So I'm just going to turn it on now. We'll see. I'll just watch it. All right. Nary a click from the solenoid. So if it's not getting the signal, then that would be one reason. The other reason is it. She's fuckered. So I guess the thing to do would be to replace this. I have that solenoid connector hooked up to my multimeter just to see if it's getting a signal at all. And that will kind of isolate whether it's the solenoid. So just off it's at, you know, reading 1.1 volts. AC, mind you, this is an AC solenoid. So you can see as soon as I turn it on, it jumps up to nearly 14 volts AC. I'm guessing that it's the solenoid because during this period I think it's supposed to be filling and absolutely jack shit happens. So I think it's the solenoid. Before heading off to order this piece I thought well what what what's the probability that the connector is possibly buggered here? It seems pretty beefy in there. Got a couple copper leads that interact with these actual uh, there's a couple little fine points here that kind of squeeze onto those leads and I wondered maybe 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 it just wasn't Delivering the juice So I squeezed it down really good gave myself a little shock anyway, if we uh, you know keep it pressed down nicely and start the Washer Listen carefully people not to that noise. I think I just hit drain just a second. I'm laying on the floor here, so you gotta forgive me. That's the one. Okay, shh. 
There, did you hear that? This thing's buzzing away. It's retracted the solenoid. If I blow through this end, which I can't do right here, but uh, the valve is actually open. So connector, that's it. Cost me nothing. This is the best. So I will, uh, I think maybe what I can do here is, uh, you know, you don't want to bugger the connection with glue too much, but maybe we'll tape it down a bit with some Kapton tape or I don't know. Anyway, we'll make sure it's secure and then set it back up again and fire it away and see what happens. You can see how loose this connection is. It just weevils in and out even with the little clip here. Mm, not too stable. So I'm just going to cap on tape that down real good. And hope she holds. All right, just a wee bit of cap on tape, maybe, you know, two eighths of a cent. So <laughs> let's see if that does the trick. All right, let's take her for a spin, shall we? Remember, Never put it all back together and install it unless you're 100% sure it's going to work. Here we go. Quick rinse. We're just going to hit start. Oh. What's that noise? What's that noise? I do believe it's running water. So it would appear that the only thing that was wrong with this was that the connector was a little bit loose. And the guy said, you know, it worked 50% of the time, which would sort of make sense, because every time you open and close the door, you get a little jiggle down there. And that might be enough to reseat it or unseat it. So, holy shit, man. I'm going to take her for an inaugural spin here. A little light on the passengers, but uh, I just can't wait. And we're off to the races. Okay, she's done. And yeah, not unexpectedly, it worked. If you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you haven't reached the point where you're tearing this dishwasher out of the cabinets and hauling it to the curb, but you're getting close, right? When I picked this thing up, I knew nothing about what was wrong with it. And every assumption I made about what could be wrong with it was also wrong, but in the end, it was actually fairly easy to diagnose what the problem was. No water, solenoid. And I'm also going to assume that part of the reason why you're looking at this video is because you called Sears and realized that they're going to charge you to drive their truck to your house, and then they're going to charge you to diagnose what the problem is, and then they're going to charge you to fix it. And all that's going to add up to a whole pile of cash. And of course, just to make sure that you don't get any bright ideas like fixing it yourself, they're going to throw in some security screws on some parts that are easily replaceable. Thank you, Sears, you dirty bastards. All that being said, don't be discouraged. This dishwasher is made of parts. Every part on this dishwasher is replaceable. So that means all you have to do is figure out which part is dickered and replace it. Now get out there, turn this video off, buy a set of security drivers, and get back at it. Thanks for watching. Cheers.